This is Earth Radio. And now here's human music. All right, YouTubers. Welcome back to a different version or a different type of uh, episode for uh, Small Engine Velocity. This is geared towards people who are uh, vloggers or moto vloggers or any kind of vlogger actually. You can use this for multiple types of things. Um, but I wanted to share because I've been asked this question several times by people who want to start their own moto vlog. Uh, what are the, the things that are in Adobe Premiere? I use the most and uh, if I could share that with them. Before we begin, I have reached in the mid 90s or so of subscribers relatively at a good pace. Uh, if you could do me a favor and hit the subscribe button, ring the bell if you want to see more view videos in the future, uh, give the video a like or a dislike at the end if you liked or if you didn't like it. Uh, any interaction is good with me. Here's the first piece of information that you can uh, use in your vlogs. Here is the uh, sample video uh, of me and my daughter doing a ride uh, yesterday on the moped. Uh, click on it and drag it in. Keep existing settings. And if you look, you can see You know that we're riding around. I'm gonna turn the volume down. It's really loud. So let's say we're watching this video and we get to this part right here. Let's see. She's slowing down towards the stop sign. And then we want to go ahead and cut from here, by the way, this is your razor blade. This is where you cut your film. All right, and then we wanna instantly jump right back into her riding across the street. So we clip here. What we used to have to do is I would highlight this, I would clear it out, grab it, and drag it back together. And then as you watch it, It'll go, you see her pulling up to the stop sign, and then jump right back into it again, going across the street. Now, let's undo all this, edit undo, undo. Now, we still have our cuts, so what you do is you click on it, right click, ripple delete, it'll go ahead and remove it, and then collapse it down. Now let's say you have several cuts down here and you go ahead and do the ripple delete here. What's nice is that it all stays together because normally if you clear this out and then you try to drag this piece then you gotta drag this one then you gotta drag this one. And if you have anything else up here or down here for audio, they'll miss a line and you gotta go through it all again. So it actually takes everything and moves it down proportionally, which is nice. To me, this is the most important. Uh, I don't know why I'm doing it five to one, but it's just a list of five things. There's really no ranking to me, but this one is the one that I like the most. It saves you a lot of time because you can do multiple cuts. You don't want these piece and then this piece and this piece. Okay, go ahead, select tool, you can hear. Then hold control and select multiple pieces. Oops, sorry, shift. And select multiple parts. And then you can right click, ripple delete, and it'll collapse it all in on itself. Another important thing, the fourth thing that's nice to, to know is text. So go ahead. I like to highlight the segment that I'm in click text tool, click somewhere on the screen, and type, hello world. Now you can double click on your text and highlight it all. Go to your effects tab and then go to effects control. Oh, sorry, you have to highlight this and then click on effects control. And 
then you can from right here you, know, you scroll down and you can okay let's highlight it and you can control your font you can control the size okay so you can change the the size of the font the font that you're using you can italicize you can justify you can make it a different color uh, you can put a stroke around it and you can change the width of that stroke kind of makes the letters pop a little bit and then you can even add a drop shadow kind of I like I like it like this it kind of looks cartoony and then you can show how long it stays in the screen so here we go hello world see useful looks nice uh, I like to use it for little subtitles or whatever it is whenever I'm doing a, a vlog or some type of information that some people need it's good to know all right a third thing that you could use uh, whenever you see this little hello world thing that I did and it kind of just uh, pops into a being I like to go to uh, video transitions dissolve and cross dissolve now there's a whole bunch of ones to use uh, I like to stay consistent and simple I use cross dissolve and whenever you see it play see it kind of gently comes in uh, you can also use this between segments see how kind of abrupt that was you can use cross dissolve or the other ones and as it comes across um, it kind of tries to there you go see how it kind of blends them together a little bit for a moment to let it make it a little bit less abrupt during the changeover uh, there are plenty of different types of crossovers in here and you can add more uh, like morph cut uh, beware with morph cut when you put it in it actually starts to process it'll actually say analyzing in background right well right now the processor is starting to bog down making this segment this clip morph into the other cu clip uh, if you put too many of these morph cuts down at one time let's say I dropped one here 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 and I just kept on going down the line uh, drop them all at the same time uh, your machine will lock up well not lock up but it'll look like it locked up but it's really processing all that uh, it's really rendering all those graphics between those two segments to make it work. So just a buyer beware when you do that. Okay, a second thing that I like to do, let's say we're at this segment right here. I have this right here. It's kind of not really self-explanatory as to what it is, but you can uh, click this. It's an arrow graphic, and you can put it on the screen. Go ahead and go to Effects and make the arrow okay so here's your scale for that graphic that you put on the screen and then here's your position left and right up and down okay so this is where it starts now if you play it's not going to be exactly pointing at her head because she's i'm moving and she's moving everywhere so go to the beginning right here where it says anchor point actually let's scoot it over you can see the timeline here anchor point click on it and you'll see it marks a point so what you do is move a couple of frames and from here not up here where you moved it originally but from where anchor point is drag where you want it to be at that particular frame and then move it over some more and move it up and you can do this frame by frame I'm actually skipping several frames as I'm doing this just to kinda so you can get a point there I'm starting to look down let's move it over and up a little bit and then now I'm really starting to move my head Oop. 
and moved a whole ton right there. Remember, you're moving it at the anchor point settings over here for the horizontal and vertical, not up here. That's where I made a mistake once. So let's just shrink this segment down to just that far. So now when you're playing it across, and let's say you're driving and you're pointing something out on the side of the road, you can say something and be like, oh look, this is where Emily is. See that the arrow kind of moves around with her head. You could do long segments with that stuff, but it, it's a little bit painstaking because you have to keep moving it frame by frame if you want it to look really smooth, but you know, you get the idea. I put a pimp hat on someone once while they were riding their bike. I did this so it looked like they were wearing a clown cartoon pimp hat as they're riding. Lastly, and this has nothing to do with the editing, but I didn't know this in the beginning. So whenever I would export my videos, I was kind of just guessing as to what the what YouTube wanted it to be to optimize it for the channel. Well, here I learned this. When you go to export and media, you'll get your save window. Make sure it's on H.264. Uh, Cause most of the time it'll be set to, I don't know, MPEG-4 or whatever it is, AVI, whatever some people think. But if you put on H.264, and you go down here, there's actually a section down here that says YouTube 1080p HD. Click on the file name, give it a name, test, uh, put it in 27, right? And then whenever you're done, go ahead, don't mess with any of the stuff because if you start messing with the other stuff down in here, uh, maximum render quality, now it goes to custom. So if you want to keep it YouTube compliant, there you go. And then hit export, give it however good your computer is, it should complete it. All right, well, I mean, it's not a long video. It's not in my normal wheelhouse, uh, but people have been asking and want uh, to get uh, some tips on what to do with Adobe Premiere. Uh, I believe those few things right there should be able to get you uh, where you need to go. If you have any questions, leave some comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. I'm, I'm pretty good about answering everybody who asks something. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Um, if you like this kind of stuff and you want some more tips or anything like that, let me know. I'll make it. Anyways, thank you for watching uh, this uh, five tips video, and I will see you next time. Thank you.